Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to do my imitation of a Peter Draws video. Peter's an artist, young guy in his mid-twenties, who lives on the east coast of the United States, and he draws. Sometimes he does art supply reviews, but he mostly draws. Sometimes speed drawings, sometimes slow drawings, all different kinds. And he just loves to pick up a pen and start making lines. He's got a really fantasy type of style to him. A lot of his work doesn't look like a thing. It just is what it is. The other thing I love about Peter's channel, besides his really fun drawings, are the way he presents his videos. He's very calm. I think of him as the Bob Ross of drawing because he's just relaxing. Sometimes I actually put his videos on when I can't sleep because he's so relaxing. For some of his videos, he records an hour of him just telling stories, talking about nothing, about going to the DMV or what he had for breakfast or his collection of nail clippers. All kinds of things that may not seem like much, but it's just really relaxing. And often when I'm working, I just turn on his videos and let him run and just let him talk. Well, one of his videos that I watched recently was of an imaginary city. His is much more fantastical than mine. I found myself reverting back to thinking about perspective and proportion. And while I didn't do all that super well, I did find that my mind kept going there, even though I was trying to channel Peter and make something wild and crazy. So Peter, I'm sorry, I was not able to let go the way you do, but maybe someday. If I watch enough of your videos, I could do that. And also, Peter, if you're watching this, which I don't think you are, because you don't like YouTube tutorials, I'm going to link one of my tutorials in the description. And maybe you'll like mine. Because to all the people who are not followers of Peter Draws, Peter wants people to get to the point. As much as he doesn't get to the point, because he doesn't really have a point, he doesn't like when people waste his time. And I try not to waste people's time. I try to make videos that'll get to the point quickly. So Peter, if you're watching, please let me know what you think of that. Please let me know what you think of that video when you see it. Something else Peter does on his channel that I thought I would do in this video is to take questions from viewers. His questions tend to be non-art related in many cases. And I have a mix of questions I was given by my patrons. So let's take a few of those questions and see what we come up with. Question number one. If you can keep only one medium, what do you pick? Well, my first instinct is to say watercolor, because that is currently my absolute favorite. But if this is a desert island question, then it might not be watercolor, because the amount of watercolor paper I would have to have is probably more than I would have on a desert island. But if I had a pen and paper, I could have piles and piles of sketchbooks that would last me a long time. So it pretty much depends on what the point of the question is. Hey, what else do we have? Here's a non-art related question. Who has the worst morning doggy breath? Giallo or Vienna? And I would say neither one of them. Because I have noticed these two dogs do not tend to unless they've just eaten something nasty, to have nasty breath. I just don't notice it. 
with my previous dogs, I noticed it all the time because they always breathed in my face and it was gross. It could be because I feed these dogs both earth porn, which is a very natural food, and I've never spent that kind of money on dog food before. But the breeder that I got Giallo from said that that is what his whole lineage had eaten for years and that he might do best on that. So it could be because of the food. Don't really know. Let's see. How do you choose which supplies to use? Well, that's an interesting thing. If I'm just doing something for me, it depends entirely on my mood. If I'm looking to do something loose or if I'm feeling a little tighter, I will try to take advantage of whatever my mood kind of tells me to do. But if I'm looking for something for a video, I keep a spreadsheet that has all the stamps in it that I'm going to be using on upcoming videos, as well as lists of fine art things that I think would be good for YouTube. And for those, I assign a medium to them based on a little bit of what I think I will use for them. If it's a stamp that has really fine details, I'll assign it pencil. If it's a stamp that has kind of loose lines to it, I might assign watercolor and something in between would be assigned to Copic. But for a specific video, I often will also look at where it comes in the rotation because I try to have my Copic and watercolor videos about even on my channel since those are the viewers that I have the most for and kind of inserting between those some pencil videos and watercolor pencil videos and pens and other types of mediums. So I try to rotate and keep it interesting. Let's see if we've got another question here. How many white gel pens did you go through last month? Well, given that I'm recording this in January and last month was December, I would say none. Because, believe it or not, even though I had all of those cards on my blog that had snow all over them all month long, they were all done before December 1st. Because if you recall, I was on YouTube sabbatical. And I had to get all my cards out in the mail, so I colored a whole bunch in November. And then saved pictures of them to post on the blog. So I technically did not make any cards during the month of December. Although there were some pieces that I did in my fine art work during that month that used white pen, but nothing that would have used up a white pen. Rather long story for what should have been a short answer. What is the most unusual non-art item you use in your artwork? I've seen the ceramic tile you use for mixing paints and was wondering if you have others that have been repurposed like it. Well, the only thing I can think of right now, well, okay, there's a couple. But the one that comes to mind immediately is the big M&M's container from Costco that I use for my water. And I use that mostly when I'm here in the studio because it's just huge and it'll last a long time. And I don't have to have three containers of water like I do when I'm doing plein air because I like to rinse my brush once in the dirtiest one and then in the less dirty and then have one that's pretty clean so that I don't get colors contaminated all over the place. I do use my brush washer with the three containers when I'm using colors like Prussian blue or phthalo that are really staining colors because I need to have something to rinse all the muck into because this those colors will just turn the water instantly. A couple other things I use that are non-craft items. One is a little container thing that I use for my brushes. And I got it at a craft store in like the section where they have all the metal racks and baskets and things. And it, it's up on a stand and it has three cups in it. And I thought it would look pretty with brushes inside of it. So I used that. 
And for my markers, for some of my water-based markers, my particularly my set of 20 Tombows that are in my set with my name on them over at Ellen Hudson, those go in a Tupperware container. I'm looking for something else to put them in because I need the Tupperware back, but they're in a tall Tupperware container. And then the other thing, as I'm looking at the desk to see what else there is, would be a tray. And I put all the stamps in it that I will be using in upcoming projects. And I collect them all in there. And the tray I got from Society6 because I wanted to see what my artwork looks like in a tray because the tray looked like an interesting thing. So now it just sits there with my artwork covered by supplies. So not really sure if that's doing the best job that it could. What is the craziest idea you've had but didn't implement? Well, that one's pretty easy, and maybe someday I'll, I'll be able to afford to implement it. I don't know. I would like to have an app. I think that would be really fun. I have a couple apps in mind. One would be for Copic. One would be for watercolor. But I don't have the bandwidth or the finances or the wherewithal for either one of those. But maybe someday. Who knows? Could happen. You never know. And let's try one more last random question. What is your favorite candy? This is probably going to be disappointing to people. Because when anyone asks me what my favorite candy would be, and I tell them, they look kind of sad. Like, I should like something fancier than this. But for me, M&M's. Both the peanut and the regular. And the reason I like them is because I can eat one, two, three M&Ms and that's it. I can do with just those. I know there's going to be more there. That's all right. I don't need to have a whole candy bar or a piece of cake or a whole giant something. I can have just a little bit and not have to eat more than I ought. Now, there's other things that I eat more than I ought, but that's a whole nother story. So we're going to end this video with that. And actually, if I'm ending it as Peter would, I could just sit around here for a while having trouble ending the video, having trouble saying goodbye. He ends his video sometimes by just looking into the camera and looking at you, you the viewer, and telling you, you're beautiful. You have a really nice smile. You're so talented. And I always think he's actually looking at me. Even though I know he's not. If you want to watch some of Peter's videos, I've linked a few of my favorites in the description down below. Go treat yourself to an hour of sitting with Peter. And I'll see you guys later. Let me know if you like this kind of video. Bye!